All right. So here we are, Yom Kippur, 2020. Oh, yeah. Back again. Y'all's you been blessing us to, to see yes. um, one after the other for year after year. And, you know, all these times that we do it, it's a rehearsal. You know, and perfectly, we get better and better as the years continue, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so we're going to start with Leviticus 23. Verses 26 to 32. But this is where the commandment to keep the day of atonement comes in, one of the places anyway. It says, Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And you shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before Yahweh your Elohim. Okay, so hereby we learn that we're to keep a day of atonement. Today just so happens to be that day. Amen. Amen. All right, so yeah. when we're talking about making atonement, what are we talking about? When we look at Hebrew, we see that the term is Kippur. Hence, we call it Yom Kippur. Kippur is number 3725 in the Strong's Concordance. It speaks to atonement. Or atonement. Um, it comes from the root word kafar. Kafar is number 3722 in this and it means to cover. So when we're talking about a day of kippurim or a day of atonement, we're talking about a day of cover. Okay? Yeah. All right, so Leviticus 23 29, it, it continues. It says, For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted. In that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul would be that do any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. He shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your work. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls. And the ninth day of the month at even, even from even unto even, Shall you celebrate yourself? Hallelujah. Amen. All right. You know, praise be to the king. Today we're going to essentially take a look at verse 27. You know, we're going to define that, you know, spiritually speaking. We would have went through to 32, but that was my plan, but Yah's plan was to get through 27. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start out. By asking the question, what does afflict your souls? You know, and I'm certain that just at face value, everyone has um, some understanding of this of this term. But we want to know, know what scripture. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we look up the word afflicted. You know, afflict, afflicted, you find that it's enough. You know, 6031. It means to depress, literally or figuratively, to chase himself, deal hardly with, humble self, be bruised with, be occupied, mishandle, force. And then what is soul? Because we're not only to be to afflict and be afflicted, but we're to afflict or afflict, um, have afflicted our soul. So what is a soul? Or a soul is nephesh, which is number 53, 12, um, 53, 15. And it speaks to an appetite. It speaks to an appetite. Rather, that appetite is a mind, body, desire, pleasure, emotion, passion. So this is what nephesh speaks to. It speaks to the appetite. It speaks to the mind. It speaks to the body. It speaks to the desire, desires, pleasures, emotions, passions. Okay? So what is an appetite? And... And when we look at the word appetite, we find that originally it was, it spoke to a strong desire, an eagerness, or a longing for what's perceived as pleasure or good, whether it be of the body or of the mind. Now, and this um, definition came from Webster's 1928 um, dictionary. You know, so an appetite speaks to a strong desire, eagerness, or longing for what's perceived perceived as pleasure or good, whether it be of the mind or of the body. See, because you can 
have a strong desire. You can be eager for something, you know, um, from your mind or from your body. Amen. So yeah. let's let's consider a couple of examples. So, um, like food and drink, hunger and thirst. You know, this is something that could be a very strong desire. You know, like we're fasting throughout the day, so it could be a very strong desire that you want to eat. You know, and that you have an eagerness or longing to eat. Okay, this is a natural desire. You know, and it's perceived as pleasurable or good, but it is of the body more so than of the mind. Now, you can have a strong desire or eagerness or a longing to eat some, say, collard greens, and you know, or some some uh, lamb or what have you. Amen. Okay, now that is an appetite of the mind. You know, that's a, that's an example of an appetite of the mind because the body, when it gets hungry enough, you know, it really doesn't care what it is. And if you get hungry enough, you know, it's been proven people will eat some of everything. But your mind will tell you, no, I don't want this anything. I want this, that, or the other. Amen. You know, even though you have a perfectly good meal in front of you, I don't have no taste for that. You know, this is the desire, the longing, the eagerness of your mind. You know, so your body has an appetite, but your mind has an appetite as well. Amen. And, and, and it, it matters not whether these strong desires, eagerness, or longing for what is perceived as pleasurable or good come from the mind or from the body is still a part of the appetite, it's still a part of the soul. It is what needs to be afflicted. Yeah. And remember, if we're going to afflict it, then that means we have to chasten oneself. So we have to chasten our mind and our body. We have to deal hardly with our mind and our body. Our mind keeps saying, no, I don't want blueberries. I want strawberries. <laughs> Shut up, mind. Eat them blueberries. <laughs> have to deal hardly with them. Amen. Okay. Have to humble oneself. You have to humble your flesh. You know, your flesh, I have made all day. I'm hungry. Shut up, flesh. We're not eating until the sun set. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, you know, so it means to be busy with to occupy, to be occupied. So, you know, to mishandle. You know, yes, I'm going to mishandle my body, you know, because even though it's asking for something to eat, I am not going to feed it until the time comes. I am going to force it not to eat. Amen. Amen. You know, so this is an affliction of the soul when you afflict rather your mind or your body's strong desires, eagerness, longings, the things that we perceive as pleasurable or good. Amen? Amen. So I pray that all can see that to truly afflict your souls is not only to abstain from food, but to abstain from all desires, eagerness, and longings of the body and mind that exhausts itself against Yahweh. Our Amen. 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 You know, so this is the objective for the day of atonement. And whenever you want to afflict your soul for, for Yah, this is the objective. Not just to abstain from food, but abstain from all the desires and eagerness and longings of the mind and body, you know, which seeks to exalt itself above Yah and his will and purposes. Amen. Amen. All right, so have some example of how some examples of how this affliction looks, you know, and how it was how it um, appeared in scripture. So these examples are found in the book of Ezra, Daniel, and Second Samuel. My first reader, please. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before Elohim, to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. In those days, I oh, did. Hold on right there for a second. I just want to point out that 
you know, the affliction was in the form of fat. Amen. Mm-hmm. You know, so that is a way of afflicting your soul because you're eliminating that your appetite, your, your natural appetite. Mm-hmm. Okay. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to to understand and to chasten thyself before thy Elohim, thy words were heard, and I am come forth for thy words. Hallelujah. Okay, let me interrupt uh, one more time. Okay, so again, here it is in Daniel. We see Daniel ate no pleasant bread. He didn't want to do anything that was pleasant, but neither did flesh nor wine um, come near his mouth. And he didn't even anoint himself. You know, so you see how he was depriving himself of the appetites in which he had. You know, and so um, the word afflict is translated as chasing he was chastening himself you know so when we're seeking to do this you know we're to even chasing ourselves you know before our elders amen yeah, yeah. all right second samuel 13 11 through 14. and when she had brought them unto him to eat he took hold of her and said unto her come lie with me my sister and she answered him nay my brother do not force me for no such thing ought to be done in israel do not thou this folly, and I whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Hallelujah. Okay, so, you know, um, this was a horrible incident. You know, but the point that I want to want to show is this word translated as force is a not. It is the very same word translated as afflicted, afflicted. Mm-hmm. You know, in Leviticus twenty three, and so you see it can mean to force yourself to do something. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, sometimes you may have to force yourself to do something. You know, so that you know, um, stray from the honest way. Sometimes you may have to chasten yourself. You know, and some. You know, and both of these speak to an affliction of oneself. They're all the same word, Anonymous 1631. Also, um, let us consider Yes, Yahoo, Isaiah 58, 1 through 7, my next reading, please. Cry aloud, bear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and tell me, uh, it doesn't sound like the mic's uh, right, Cry aloud, bear not, lift up Okay, here we go. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Yaakov their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their Elohim. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to Elohim. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our souls, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labor. Behold ye fast your strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to Yahuwah? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? to loose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that thou cast out to thy house? 
when thou say, seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so here it is. Yah defines, you know, for himself, you know, what he, what he expects during the day of affliction. Amen. You know, um, it's not it's not just about bowing your head down and spreading out sackcloth and putting the ashes up, up under you and running around saying, Woe is me. You know, this is not an accept this is not an acceptable day of Yahoo just because you do that. You know, but rather he wants you to loose the bands of wickedness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, undo Amen. the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. Yeah. That you That's may right. break every yoke. Yeah. It's to deal the bread to the hungry. Just because you're not eating, don't mean they can't eat. That's right. And that thou bring the poor which are out to, um, to thy house when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Because yeah. we were supposed to be your own people. Yeah. Your own sister and brother, sisters and brethren. Amen. Amen. You know, so when we look in verse 9, we see that it says, Thou take away the mist of, uh, from the midst of thee, the yoke, mm -hmm. the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. Mm -hmm. Let us consider what the yoke speaks of. When we look at this word yoke, we find that it is motai in the Hebrew, number 4133. It speaks to a pole by implication of yoke. It is actually um, an aspect of vote number 4132 being a wavering. That is fall, to slip, to shake, to be out of course. So what Yah is saying, take away from the midst of you your wavering from his will. Take away from the midst of you your, your falls and your slip ups. Take away from the midst of you your shaking and being out of course with him. Amen? Amen. This is a day of affliction. By stop wavering, stop doing the things that are against his will. That is a day of affliction unto Yahuwah. It goes on, verses 10 through 14 says, And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light arise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as noon as the noonday. And Yahuwah shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths yeah. to dwell in. Hallelujah. Yeah. If thou yeah. turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. Yeah. See, yeah. Yah's holy day, his Shabbat, whether it be the day of atonement or a weekly Shabbat or one of the other feasts, is always about not doing your ways. Yeah. Not yeah. doing your thing. Right. Not finding your pleasure. Yeah. He even goes on to say, nor speaking thine own words. Yeah. You don't even want to suppose to speak about what you want to speak about. Right. You're supposed to speak Yah's word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hence he says in verse 14, then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahoo. Yeah. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Yahoo thy father. Yeah. For the mouth of Yahuwah I have spoken. Yeah. That's how you delight yourself yeah. in Yahuwah. This is what he wants from us. So, today is Yom Kippur. That is the day of atonement. It's the atonement, remember, speaks to coverings. So another way of saying this is today is a day of coverings. But how are we to be covered? When we look at verse 37, um, Leviticus 23, 26, um, 27 says, And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Also in the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. There shall be a holy convocation unto you, that you shall afflict your soul, an offering, offering, made by fire unto Yahuwah. Okay, so it speaks about the day of atonement being the tenth day. Ten speaks to Yah's laws and responsibilities. It says that it's in the seventh month. Seven speaks to spiritual completion in the heavens and the earth. It also speaks to holiness itself. 
When we talk about a day or talking about a month, we're just simply speaking to a period of life. In Genesis 1 5, y'all call it the light what? Day. Okay? And light, spiritually speaking, speaks to Yah's laws, his Torah, and Yahushua's commands. Hence, we read in Proverbs 6 23, it says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law or Torah is light yeah. and reproofs of instruction. Out of way of life. Also, Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Are you beginning to see what light is? Yeah. Psalms 19, 8, the statutes of Yahuwah are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahuwah is pure, enlightening the eyes. Yeah. Hallelujah. You don't have yeah. to be in darkness. You don't have yeah. to walk around. In right. You don't have to be blind. Leviticus 23, 27, when we put these these uh, meanings into the passage, it reads a little different. To speak of Yah's law and responsibility during his period of life, within the holy period period of his law or his Torah and Yahshua's commands, there should be a day of covering. There should be a day of covering. And so we still haven't quite got to how those covenants take place. And so the next half of Leviticus 23, 27 says, And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. An offering made by fire. This is how we cover those sins. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is the coverings. This is how you cover. We've already learned that to truly afflict your soul is not to uh, only to abstain from food, but to abstain from all desires, even as and only to the mind and body that are not of Yahweh your Elohim, right? Now, if one were to look carefully with an open mind and their spiritual eyes open, they'll see that within this verse, Yah is depicting the affliction of our souls as an offering made by God. You know, hence he says, and ye shall afflict your souls in offering, offering made by fire. The affliction of your souls is an offering made by fire. Spiritually um, speaking, fire speaks to love, or fire equals love. You know, so spiritual fire equals love, and vice versa. Love equals fire. This is why scripture teaches that Elohim is love. That's first Yohanan 4.16. Amen. And it also teaches that our Elohim is a consuming fire. That's Hebrews 12, 29, right? So if Elohim is love and Elohim is fire, then love equals fire. And fire equals love. Amen? Now, oh, I'm sorry. Now, when we're told to afflict our souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, spiritually, we're being told to abstain from all our desires, our eagernesses, our longings, that they are that that are not in conjunction with Yah our Elohim. Whether they be of the mind or of the body, that is, to offer an offering made by fire. When we when we do this, we're actually offering an offering made by fire. The scripture validate this. Let us consider how fire consumes. See, because of fire, uh, one of its uh, primary properties is it consumes mm -hmm. what it burns. Amen? Amen. You know, so we're going to um, seek to scripturally validate this by considering how fire consumes, which is through the act of burning. But what is the spiritual aspect of burning? That's the question. Mm -hmm. So let us turn to scripture for our answers. When we look at Deuteronomy 32, 24, it says, They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat. And with bitter destruction, I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of dust. So we see here, Deuteronomy 32, 24 teaches us, it says, They shall be burnt with hunger. So hunger can be a type of burn. Amen? Can you see that? Yeah. I'm not making this up. Can you see that? Amen. Hunger can be a type of burning. You know, so when you afflict your soul, 
That is your appetites. Whether it be a hunger for food or a hunger for love or a hunger for lust or a hunger for whatever. When you afflict your souls, those longings, those burnings, those things that you are eager, eager for, you know, whatever it may be, that is the burning, spiritually speaking, that's being spoken of. It's those desires, those longings, those, those things that you want outside of Yah. You know, for some it may be a, to be a millionaire. For some it may be, you know, to have the prettiest, prettiest wife in the world. For others it may be, you know, just, just to help a person through their day. It could be anything. But when it exhausts itself above Yah, and you're still longing and desiring to have it, bless you. It causes a burning, that longing, that, that, that lusting, that desiring without satisfaction is that burning. I pray you can see that. You know, also consider Young Yahoo 20, verse 9. It says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more of his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning yeah. fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing. I could not stay. See, can't you see he was longing to speak God's word? He was trying not to, but it was set up in him like a burning fire. Yeah. It wouldn't let him. He couldn't, he couldn't forbear it. He had to speak. Also, consider Sirach 23, verse 16. If two sorts of men multiply sin, the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire. It will never be quenched. It will be consumed. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till you have kindled with a fire. Mm -hmm. You know, again, depicting that your desires, your desires, your, your longings, you know, unsatisfied is that burning. Genesis 44, 18. Then Yahuda came near unto him and said, Oh, my Adonai, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Adonai's ears, and let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. So again, you know, we see that the burning spoke to a passion, an anger, you know, which is a which is an emotion, a passion that causes you want to want to do something. Because you want to long after doing something you do not get it. You know, but it could be anything. You know, hence in Psalms 79 5, it says, How long, Yahuwah, will thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? So you see, it's, it's another, it's a passion, it's a longing, it's a desire. You know, jealousy is a rivalry, you know, um, over uh, over someone's, someone's, um, time or affection you know so y'all longs to have our time and affection yeah. amen. and when he don't get it he get jealous mm -hmm. amen. Amen. amen and that jealousy can burn like a fire mm -hmm. only difference right. is y'all will always satisfy it yeah. Yeah. also first corinthians 7 9 but if they cannot contain let them marry for it is better to marry than to burn uh -huh. again this longing of the flesh, you know, unsatisfied is that burning. You know, so these passions, these longings, these desires, these emotions, when they go unsatisfied, mm -hmm. causes a burning. Amen. 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 And one more, and that's Second Corinthians 11, 23 through 29. It says, are they ministers? Oh, there's a little backdrop. This is Apostle Paul. He's kind of boasting about, you know, uh, his walk in the sea out, you know, because there are those who are uh, who were boasting to, to the Corinthians about, you know, how great a, a disciple, <clears throat> a disciple or an apostle they were. And so, you know, Apostle Paul decided to entertain them in that in that vein, you know, by speaking about 
his credits in the body of Messiah. He says, are they ministers of the Shia? I speak as a fool. I, I am more. And labor is more abundant and stripes above measure in prison, more frequent in deaths off of the Yahudim five times. He see God for the stripes anymore. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was I stoned. I was stoned thrice. I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Yeah. In journeys, often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils of by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings, often in hunger and thirst and fastings, often cold and in naked and nakedness, yeah. beside those things which are about. That which come up upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? I am yeah. not weak. Who is offended? But I'm not. Amen. You see, you see what this burning is. Yes. I pray that everyone can spiritually uh, can see that spiritually speaking, to burn is to have an appetite for something. To have an eagerness, a desire, a longing for something that yeah. is to afflict one's soul. Yeah. Spiritually speaking, an offering made by fire speaks to an offering made by loving Yahuwah. Yeah. See, that's what that fire is. Yah is a consuming fire. Yeah. Yah is also love. So, spiritually speaking, an offering made by fire is an offering made by loving Yahuwah Elohim. Yahushua Mashiach, his son, more than the eagerness, more than the desires, more than the longings of the carnal mind and his flesh in conjunction with the world. And when you love Yah more, it causes a burning because your flesh still want what it want. Your mind still want what it want. See, but Yah says, no, I want you to do it this way. But your mind may say, no, but this is a quicker way of doing it or this is a better way of doing it. But Yah says, no, I want you to do it my way, son. I want you to do it my way, daughter. I want you to do it my way. We don't know, but the world has a way that's that's much more advanced now, Yah. You know, we can, we can just cut some corners and be there in, in, a, in a fraction of the time. But daughter, son, I want you to do it my way. Then you also find that it call it brings about burning. Hallelujah. Right. See, and when you acquiesce to doing it God's way, then you also find some kind of feedback. Hallelujah. All right, so I pray that you, everyone can see that. Speaking of an offering made by fire really speaks to loving God more than your desires, right. loving God more than your longings, more than your carnal mind and his flesh in conjunction to the world. The world has this way, Yah has his way. Yeah. When you do things Yah's way, it will cause a burning to do it. The world's way. You know, sometimes when you're doing it Yah's way, you'll see things and other people in the world and they have this, that, and the other, and you long to have those things as well. But Yah says, Patience, be still, just follow my way. Because what you see them have today will be gone tomorrow. But if you wait on me when I give it to you, you'll have it forever more. Amen. Hebrews 9, 6, and 7. But when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of Elohim. But it, into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So what this system, of the sacrificial system, sought to teach ancient Israel was not how many innocent animals could be slain. That's not what it was about. Right. It was to teach ancient Israel as well as us today that Yah would accept the blood that is the soul. Remember that word, 
blood was soul, nephesh. It was supposed to those desires, those longings, you know, and Yah will accept those longings, those, those desires, that eagerness as a substitute. Yeah. You know, um, i.e. a substitute for the blood and soul of the flesh in exchange for the soul and flesh of the sin. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, that's what was going on when they brought that lamb there. You know, that innocent animal, his flesh had to die. Mm -hmm. His soul had to die. His flesh speaks to the external man, you know, and its desires, its longings, its even. The blood speaks to the soul or the mind and its longings, its desires, its even. See, you had to put all, that's why you're not to eat the blood. You had to pour it upon the altar. You had to put the flesh upon the altar. Amen. You know, so that it will be consumed by Yah, who's a consuming fire. So can't you see, it's the love of Yah, who is that loving, consuming fire that causes the burning of those longings, that eagerness, those desires. We look at Leviticus 17, 11, it says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul, for it is the blood that make of an atonement for the soul. Yeah. It's the blood that make of an atonement for the soul. Why? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. And that life is the soul. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9, 19 through 22, and when Moshe had spoken every precept to all the people according to the um, law, he took up the blood of cows and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, this is the blood of the testament which Elohim hath rejoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the Torah or by the law purged with blood yeah. and without the shedding of blood. Is no remission. So you have to have that blood. You have to have that nephew. You have to have those those longings, those desires, that eagerness that's in conjunction with the world has to be consumed. It has that burning has to take place. You have to love Yah more than you love those things. Yeah. But what that system could not do was erase, that is, cleanse the guilt and the shame of sin. Mm -hmm. You know, because the flesh, it says in Hebrews 9, 8 through 10, Ruach HaKodesh, or the Holy Spirit, this signifying that the way into the holies of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which only which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and kind of ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. So in other words, you know, it couldn't take away the guilt, the guilt of the conscience, because you knew that this this innocent animal was dying on your behalf. You couldn't help but feel guilty that this innocent animal had to die for something you did. Not if you had a just heart anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, so they couldn't get rid of that, that guilt concerning their sins. Now, Hebrews 9.23 teaches us, it says, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things, see, that was just the pattern, the patterns of things in the heavens, to be purified with these. But the heavenly things, the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. Mm -hmm. See, that sacrifice of that sheep or that goat, that innocent sheep or goat, yeah, it covered the sin, you know, but now we have better sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Amen? In Yahushua, we have better sacrifices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why our kingdom it's called the kingdom of Hashemayim, the kingdom of the heavens, even because it's all about heavenly things, that is spiritual things. Hence, it has spiritual sacrifices. Yeah. 
So that's why we don't have to go and get a goat or bull or oxen or sheep and take it to the altar anymore because we're offering spiritual sacrifices. Yeah. Yes, we need to bring our sacrifices to a heavenly or spiritual tabernacle and offer heavenly or spiritual sacrifices, even as Yahushua did. We read about it in Hebrews 9, 11 through 14. But the Shiach being come as an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. Hallelujah. Not made with hands. That is to say, not of this build, neither by the blood of goats and calves, yeah. But by his own blood, mm -hmm. he entered in once into the holy place, yeah. having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of and helpers sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifier of the flesh, how much more mm -hmm. shall the blood of Messiah, mm -hmm. who through the eternal ruach offered himself without spot mm -hmm. to Elohim, mm -hmm. yeah. purge your conscience mm -hmm. from dead yeah. works yes. to serve. Yeah. You know, so we can accept Yahshua's sacrifice. You know, and it will even purge us, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim. You know, once. Yes, it will absolutely do that, but it will do it once. And that's what a lot of people get tripped up. Because they don't realize that yes. His blood will purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living melody once. Hence, we read in Hebrews 10, 1 through 4, it says, For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices they offer year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. For then would they have um, would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged to have no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices, there was a remembrance again made of sins every year. But it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. You know, so the blood of bulls and goats can only atone or cover sins, mm -hmm. but it can never remove. Yeah. That is, it can only cause you to be accepted of God for the time being. Yeah. But it does not and cannot take away your sin from death. Verses 5 through 7 of Hebrews 10. Wherefore, when he come up into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Mm -hmm. See, this is not what he wanted from the beginning. Right. See, that's why when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice yeah. and offering thou wouldest not, but a body God. has thou prepared. Mm -hmm. Oh, we get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. We get into yeah. where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Amen. In yeah. burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou had no pleasure. Then said I, No, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Elohim. See, this is what it's about. See, and this was actually a quote from Psalms 40, uh, verses 6 through 8. It says, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. My ears hast thou opened. See, this is what y'all wants. He wants you to open your ears, he wants you to hear and obey him. Burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required. Yeah. Then said I, No, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O yeah. Elohim. Yeah. Yeah. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That's what it's about. Yeah. Now we get to the crux of the matter. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Only acceptable unto Elohim, which is your reasonable service. Yes, sir. Now that's the flesh. Now here comes the soul. Yes. And be ye not conformed to this world, yes. but be ye transformed yes. by the renewing yes. of your mind, yes. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. Yes. Yeah. Now we're talking about burning some stuff. Yeah. Now we're talking about burning some stuff. See, because it's a whole bunch in us. It's a whole yeah. bunch in our flesh. Yeah. It's a whole bunch in our in our carnal minds that yeah. want to conform to this world. Yeah. See, but our call is not to conform to this world, but rather to be transformed yeah. by the renewing of our minds. Hallelujah. Yeah. That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is the type of offering Yahushua HaMashiach gave. 
that our sins might be not only be covered, but that they might be washed mm. away, murdered, yeah, yeah. completely. Yeah. Hence, this is the type of offering we are called to offer as well. This is why Romans 12 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Because our Messiah said, pick up your torture stake and follow me. Yeah. He didn't say, you know, I came to do it for you. Yeah. No, he said, follow me. When he picked up his torture stake, last I checked, he wasn't going to have a party. Nope. That's right. When he picked up his torture stake, he was being tortured. Mm -hmm. It was grievous. It wasn't, no, it wasn't a fun thing. So when we pick up our torture stakes, we can expect the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. See, but that torture is that burning. Yeah. You understand? It's that burning that we put on the altar. It's that burning of the flesh. It's that burning of the mind. The carnal mind. Hence, this is the type of offerings we're called to offer. Hebrews 10, 8 through 10. Above, when he says sacrifice and offering, the burnt offerings and, and offering of sins, thou wouldest not, neither had, a, had his pleasure therein, which were, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come, in, I come to do thy will, O Elohim, to take up away the first, that he may establish the second. This is the way he establishes. Yeah. The way he establishes for us to put our longings, our eagerness, our eagerness, our desires upon his altar mm -hmm. for us to love Yah and let his consuming fire love Yah more yes. more than our loans, our desires, our yes. eagerness and let his consuming fire consume them, do away with yes. them that we might be transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of our mind. This is yes. how we're transformed by doing away with all these longings and desires that is not of Yah. Right. This is how we're sanctified. Yes. This is how we offer our body. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 21 through 28. Having a high priest over the house of Elohim, let us draw near with a true heart and a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Yeah. For he is faithful that mm -hmm. promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, yeah. not forsaking the assembling of the, of ourselves together yeah. as the manner of yeah. some is, but exhorting one another in so much the more yeah. as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, mm -hmm. remember I told you, you only know, gonna wash us of our sins yeah. once. If we sin willfully, mm -hmm. after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, mm -hmm. there remain of no more sacrifice for yeah. sin. But a certain fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moshe's law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Yeah. You know, so according to the Torah, which was made after the patterns of what Moshe seen in the heavens, mm -hmm. they died when they when they um, forsook Yah's will way and purposes. Mm -hmm. They died without mercy under the witnesses of two or three. Hebrews 10, 29 um, through 33, of how much sore punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the son of Elohim. That was Moshe, but now we're talking about the teachings, commandments, and instructions of Yahshua, our Messiah. He said, how much more, how much sore punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy to have trotted down under the foot the son of Elohim and have counted the blood of the covenant where wow. he was sanctified in unholy things. Mm -hmm. You know, so if they died without mercy under Moshe, what's wow. going to happen up under Yahshua? Wow. Mm -hmm. They're going to die twice. Yeah. They're going to die physical mm -hmm. death and yeah. spiritual death. Yeah. But we know him that have said, vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Adonai and again. The Adonai shall judge his people. Yeah. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. Mm -hmm. But call to remembrance the former day in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. Mm -hmm. See, this is what it's about, y'all. This is what it's about. Yeah, this is the day of atonement. But even after the day, you're still to endure a great fight of afflictions. Mm -hmm. See, because those longings, those desires, the, that eagerness to... to um, to have this, that, and the other that the world offers is always going to be yeah. there. Yeah. 
and it's always going to be against the will of Elohim. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 33, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stop. Yeah, people gonna look at you, they're gonna say you're crazy, they're gonna yeah. say, you know, take all that, they're gonna say that, you know, you don't have to do this, that, and the other, you know. Partly whilst you were made a gazing stop, you have to be willing to take that burden. Both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while she became companions of them that were so used, you know, because people that you used to know, they know how you used to be. And, you know, sometimes when they see you walking towards Yah, they run the other way. And uh, I'm not with that, you know, you know, I want to do this, that, and the other. But that's not how it goes, you know, so. As Romans 12 1 says, we are to present our bodies as living sacrifices. We are not to be conformed to this world. We are to allow ourselves to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Yeah. You know, and today is a day of covering. So we're going to talk about other ways um, of covering. Proverbs 10 12, hatred stirs up strife, but love covereth all sins. Mm -hmm. So we know that love is the same as fire. It covers all sins, you know, and the way it covers all sins is by consuming, that is, burning up those longings, those desires, that evenness that we have for the world. First Keepers or Peter 4 8, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity, which is either pay love, shall cover the multitude of sins. So again, we see that for the love of Yah. We burn. Yoga 15, 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, this is the way that Yah showed his greatest love, and this is the way that he expects us to do likewise. Yaakov 5, 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and won't convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul through death and shall hide. So this is how we can cover others. We can cover others by trying to correct the error of their ways. You know, and trust me, you're gonna go, you're gonna burn when you try to correct some of, yes. some of your friends, the error of some of your friends and family's ways, because they're gonna they're gonna turn they're gonna turn turn yes. on you so quick, you know. Yes. You're gonna feel that burn, you're gonna feel that heat, you're gonna feel the heat of their wrath, you know. Heat of their anger, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just serious. See, see, but when you do so, you're making the offering made by fire. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, so today is Yom Kippur. That is the day of atonement. Atonement speaks to covering. So today is a day of covering. Question, have you covered someone today? You may be wondering how you can do this, you know. Forgiveness is a way of coming. You know, this is why Yahshua had his, um, watched his disciples speak because he knew they were about to trespass against him. When someone trespass against you, you actually have them in a place where you can hold their trespass against them or you can cover their sins and let that trespass go. Yeah, yeah. For instance, someone come come by come by my office and they steal something from out of my office. And you know they have they have something on their heart, you know, y'all put something on their heart that they, they feel like they just have to return it. So they come back and they return it. When they return it, I have the option of calling the police mm -hmm. and, and prosecuting because they stole from me. Amen. Amen. You know, or I can cover their sin and let it go. Yeah. Today is a day of cover. Yeah. So if there's anyone in your life that has trespassed against you, I pray that you find it in your heart to forgive them. Because if you don't forgive them, then you can't be forgiven. You know, so this is the day, this is the time, this is the season to do just that. You know, this is the time if you know someone has been in the error of their ways and you've never said anything to them, this is the time to try to 
get them on the right path. Yeah, you may burn because of it, but that's what this time is all about. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Would it become those living sacrifices? Yeah. That's what it's about. Okay, now that's the end of the message, but I have a special offer. And it's actually a poem I wrote concerning the day, the day of atonement. And this is how it goes. It says, I've been, think, I've been thinking, y'all, about all the bad times and sad times you brought me through. What I, what I used to call the good times of the past when I used to put you last. Times when I was slipping on my pavement, driving while sipping on Satan's syrup. When I was always DUI. Yet, God, you ignored the voice of my actions and heard my heart's cry. Please forgive me, y'all, for I didn't fully realize it at the time, but due to the gift given me via your word, I conquered death, I now see your word afresh. Hence, I, was not, I now understand how I must serve you and obey your commands. Now that I am, they tell me that I can't be perfect, that, you, that, you only, that only you can do that. But they won't stop me from striving for perfection. And that's the fact. For the rest of my life, y'all, I'm going to spend, I'm going to spend my present making up for my past. But back when I had bought into the devil's deception and lived for cash, I'm no longer the happy heathen looking for my purpose in life. Thanks to you, y'all, today I can say that I'm a professional that lived the way of sanctity, hired to be to develop perks that produce goodly works. I'm living as a quaint saint and a mass in heaven. Y'all, I understand that this is, this is the day you set apart for me to atone, that is to make amends with you, family, and friends. Your day of atonement is a day for one to look into the mirror, to see things clear, to judge oneself, but not by the immoral measuring stick of material wealth. Rather, I'm to use the life of Yahshua as the stick by which I measure, and thereby cease giving in to the allure of the world and the lust of flesh and pleasure. Yah, when I look at my reflection in the mirror, I don't always like what I see. Therefore, grant me this plea that not only today, but for the rest of my life, I pray that you help me grasp every opportunity to change yeah. what I see until my reflection only resembles you. Yeah. To truly honor Yah's day of atonement, one must open their real eyes, thereby, whereby one spiritually hears. Oh, I'm sorry. To truly honor Yah's day of atonement, one must open their, their real ears, whereby one spiritually hears. For the one, for once done, for once done, all calamitous fears and tears cease, and one is left with nothing but serene peace. This is why atonement begins when we're in darkness to show us that the beginning that in the beginning we're blind yet we can still hear if we don't we follow y'all's voice and obey what we say he'll lead us into the light and heal our sight that is he'll open our real eyes that we might realize the poison of satan's lies yeah. atonement started last night but it'll restart tomorrow but we're sure to mess up again yeah. hence atonement can only truly end by becoming one with god hence atonement is at one with God. Say mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's all I have for you, prayer was a blessing.